As I was saying, um, activities provide a chance for practicing, for reinforcing, but tasks are different. The key element is communication. So we have to keep in mind, what is it that our students like to communicate? Um, we usually have a very clear idea of the profile of our students. Um, the perfect task will have to do with the age of the students, their interest, uh, their know-how in technology. Um, fortunately, right now we have web two tools which help us keep the products, the tangible products of a task um, to be kept in time. For example, one of the challenges that we teachers had was with oral skills. If we ask the students to perform either a monologue or a dialogue, um, it was very hard to keep that, to keep a register, a memory of the task. But now, you know, using um, the tools that the students have available, like their cell phones, well, they can make video clips. And those tasks can be published, can be shared, can be uh, analyzed, can be used for further reference. And uh, they're very interesting activities that students uh, love using, uh, using technologies. So um, the perfect task will come um, depending on um, what is it the topic, what, what are the things that I want to review with my students, that I need them to communicate. One of the areas that's quite ample for, because it can lead you to many topics, is telling a story. Digital storytelling um, has many advantages. For example, if I want to practice uh, the past tense, I can ask them to tell me about their favorite keepsake, or to tell me about their school days in middle school, or uh, their last vacation. And besides, nowadays when they can use pictures to give context to their stories, that enhances and puts a little less pressure on the language in itself because um, the visual image helps to provide um, the necessary context for more complicated things that need to be described. So tasks are a challenge for imagination, creativity, and for sharing, for sharing emotions and ideas. Um, high school students are at the age where they can express very easily and very creatively. It's the perfect time. They're risk takers. They like to, to share and try out new things and they love group work. So that would be, for example, another element to think about. How do your students like to, to work? In small groups, in mixed groups, um, all by themselves because maybe they are adults and they need more independence. So they're not, there's not like, you know, a recipe for the best task. It really depends on your context, um, on the age of your students, your own purposes, their own purposes as well. And now there's also this last part in tasks that, what about the outcomes? I'm really puzzled myself because sometimes I've seen students, you know, we have practice with textbook exercises and they're ready for their task and they prepare it, they rehearse it, they practice it, but in the end, um, I can still see reflected their level of competence in the product that they created. Uh, some of them have even mistakes. And my question is, what is more important? Uh, the message they want to share or perfection? And this is a long debate that we as teachers need to analyze and share and find where the cuts should be drawn. Obviously, if it's a task for teachers, we should thrive for perfection. But um, I don't know. I still have my questions about a student's tasks. And also an important factor to consider is evaluation. Um, usually, um, institutions require teachers to use instruments that have been validated, that are reliable, like tests, discrete item tests. However, when tasks, well, evaluation is different. Uh, you uh, should use something like a checklist. Are the things that I want to see present in the task? 
uh, maybe a rubric. However, this is something that creates uncertainty in authorities, in educational authorities. Sometimes they're still not willing to, to have tasks as a mean to show the students' progress. Um, we, as teachers, need to have uh, some serious consideration about um, how well do tasks reflect the students' learning. To me, in my personal experience, I think they do. I think they provide not only the motivation for the student to communicate, but they are a sample of how much they have progress, as well as a sample of where the emphasis and the next steps in learning should be, because it shows their weaknesses and strengths. So if you are thinking about using tasks, well, I should definitely invite you to try out uh, some of the tasks uh, that are now even included in textbooks, because we also teachers look at this section in the book and say, well, that's a task. Maybe we can skip to the important part, which is grammar and vocabulary. So, well, let's try to give it a second thought and uh, implement and be able to share and discuss um, our ideas on using tasks for foreign language teaching and learning. Thank you very much. Um, I hope you found these um, ideas uh, as a starting point for your reflection. Thank you.